Hello and welcome to my new quad guide as of update 41.2. The strategy is pretty easy, but I guess you could f struggle at some parts maybe? Probably not. Also, open quad is now. Anyways, let's get started by placing this first dart monkey as left and as center as possible. Like this. Just as left as and as center as possible. This guy goes as high and as center as possible, and this guy goes as right and as center as possible. No real visual indicator for these placements, so I didn't really stop to show them, because it's just shoving it into a place. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, for round 7, you're going to have to set your right dart monkey to strong until it hits the first green, and then you switch it back to first. That is just to make sure it actually hits the green and not something else. <laughs> and then for round 8, place another dart monkey as bottom and as center as possible. These four darts form the foundation for our early game and are generally done on any quad completion. For round 9, set your left dart monkey to strong, and I guess you can take this round slowly if you'd like by turning off fast forward. You don't have to though shouldn't be needed if your placements are at least somewhat decent. For round 10, set that dart monkey back to first, and then place a sniper right up here, and set him to strong. In the middle of round 12, we're going to place Obin right over here, kind of as low as possible, and just to, like, the right of your dart monkey. Kind of. It's not too difficult of a placement, but you should be able to figure it out. And then, for round 14, place an engineer right here, making sure that the left part of his range right over here does not touch the grass. Well, it, it touches the edge of the track, but it shouldn't be in the grass. For round 15, I guess you could use a Brambles if, you, if you're if you scared for some reason, but you shouldn't be. The setup basically wins every time, even without a hero, so Oban is just kind of overkill by this point. And then upgrade your Engineer to Sentry Gun. Ignore the super obvious cut, this is the same run, don't worry about it. I didn't do anything else, I kind of just left for a few minutes. <laughs> I do that sometimes. Before round 21, place a spike factory right over here so that the range barely goes into the track and it shouldn't be firing in too wide of a range. If it's like this, how I have it, it's completely fine, but if it's like super, super close to the track, that's not a good thing. And then for 22, upgrade your sniper to full metal jacket and take the round slow as it can seem a bit scary sometimes. And then 23 isn't scary at all, so you won't have to worry about it. Upgrade your engineer to a 102 sentry gun with pin, and then after that, upgrade it to a 302 sprocket with pin. Before 31, place a spike factory right over here in such a way so that the range goes kind of through like the middle of the track below your engineer. If you place it too far to the left, the spikes will get used by balloons going from left to right, so that can be a pretty big issue. And you also don't want it too far to the right because then the spike factory won't actually be used for cleanup, it'll be used for damage and we don't really want that. Oh yeah, also you should probably use brambles at the start of 31. I kind of forgot and did it late here, but sometimes you have to, sometimes you don't. I probably didn't have to here, but you might. After 33, place a wizard, no, don't remove that, place a wizard right over here in such a way so that the inside of the range border touches the bottom corner of this, like, grass hedge thing with the flowers on it. That that thing right there. And then 
upgrade your wizard to a 010 fireball. And then place another wizard right over here, above the track, just in the middle, in the middle of that segment of the track. You should be able to eyeball it pretty well. It's not super precise. And then also upgrade it to fireball. Oh yeah, I'd also like to address the reason why I'm uh, m placing towers and moving them to that location over the track. My mouse is starting to kind of slip, so I might have to get a new one. <laughs> and sometimes it's just letting go in the middle of me holding, and I don't want to have to ruin a run like that. Oh yeah, and then use a bramble on 35. Very important that you do that. If you don't, you probably die. <laughs> After 35 ends, upgrade both of your wizards to wall of fire. The reason why we do this now and not in the middle of 35 is because we want the wall of fire to come out immediately on 36, and that's just the best timing for it. At some point before round 40, upgrade your top wizard to a 032 Dragon's Breath. This guy will basically carry our top lane until we afford the Dark Knight, and kind of helps maybe a little bit possibly in the late game. Probably not though. <laughs> and then use a Bramble on round 40. That's kind of important. If you don't, you probably die, and you wouldn't want to do that. Before round 42, Place a village right over here in such a way so that it's kind of like as bottom right as possible while still having the engineer in its range. And then upgrade it to a 002 discount. Get 022 on your wizard, your bottom wizard that is. And then upgrade your spike factory to a 110. This is very important to beat the camos this round because if you don't do that you just die to the bottom lane and that would kind of suck. I'm not entirely sure if there's RNG on this round. There could be. I've done it plenty of times and I haven't died, but it also always seems to get a little bit sketchy. So, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of weird. 43 should be fine. You, you, you should be fine, unless there are any nerfs to the setup in the future that I could not have predicted. And then get your bottom wizard to a dragon breath as well after round 44. Before 46, upgrade your bottom spike factory to a 310 spiked balls. This guy will turn into a spiked mines later and will help a lot with the late game. And mid game, but more the late game. And then, at some point before round 48, place a village right up here. It should not be in the range of your spike factory or Oban, but place it so that the top part of the range border touches the top flower petal on this specific flower. And then upgrade it to a 102 discount village. And then also use brambles on the camo purples of 48, because if you don't do that, you probably die. And that would suck. When you've upgraded that village to a 102, it should be in the range of your spike factory and open, which is kind of nice. Before round 50, Place a super monkey right up here, as top left as possible. Just shove it into that corner. And then upgrade it to a 003 Dark Knight. Don't cross path it just yet. We actually don't want to cross path it until later. You'll only actually be able to afford the Dark Knight upgrade in the middle of 51, but yeah, you, you get what I mean. It should also be able to hit bottom lane Moab switch helps sometimes, but also hurts sometimes. It's kind of annoying. But yeah, you should actually afford Dark Knight in the middle of 51. Don't cross path it just yet, because round 62 happens and we need it to be able to pop the purples. And then when you can afford it, upgrade your spiked balls to a 320, and then upgrade your village to 102 before placing that alchemist. I forgot, and it was not in the discount range. You want that alchemist to be on the left of your spike factory so it doesn't give the acidic mixture dip buff to any other tower. And then upgrade this alchemist to a 301. Also, me placing that alchemist was an example of my mouse slipping, which happens like once or twice more in this run, and it's kind of annoying. Anyways, I should stop with my incoherent rambling.
After round 59, you should be able to afford spiked mines on your bottom spike factory. This guy will be the main carry for the bottom side and just helps a ton throughout the entire game. And then before or after 60, place or move Oban's trees there and then place them. These guys will act as an incredibly strong cleanup for the Dark Knight and the future tax zone that we'll get. And this even allows us to skip upgrading our spike factory until all the way until round 100, which is insane. And then upgrade your left village or your bottom village to a 202 jungle drums. And your top village. Both of them should be at jungle drums. 63 should get absolutely annihilated by a single spiked mine and our Dark Knight Dragon Breath combo. It's surely an interesting one. <laughs> After round 63, now we can cross path our Dark Knight. With the top one, obviously. It's cheaper now. 64 should also get absolutely destroyed, which is a first for this map. That does not happen too often. <laughs> when you can afford it, place an ice monkey as bottom right, or as kind of like as top bottom right as possible, just as far into that corner as you can, yep, right there, and then over the next few rounds, upgrade it to a 410 embrittlement. you'll be able to afford the final upgrade on this ice monkey on round 67. Whenever you can afford it, place a tack shooter as high and as right as possible next to your ice monkey. You want this guy to be directly under the track so all of his tacks will hit mob class balloons and then upgrade him to a 204 overdrive. You should actually be able to afford the upgrade on round 70. And then set your Dark Knight to close on round 71. You could have done this from the moment that we got it, but I kind of forgot. The close targeting helps a little bit. It, hurt, it helps more than it hurts, so I guess it's just nice to have, I guess. Also, the reason why we went for a Dark Knight here instead of other more traditional support is because it synergizes very well with Oban. Oban's level 11 buff gives it plus 2 pierce and a tiny bit of extra range. The plus 2 pierce is the main thing here because Dark Knight has fairly low pierce and increasing its pierce with Oban is actually pretty good. Before round 75, Place attack shooter just as far up this corner as possible. Just shove it up there. And then upgrade it to a 204 overdrive. And then set it to strong because you can definitely do that. Anyways, give your bottom overdrive an alchemist right up here and upgrade it to 320. Seventy-five also gets destroyed on this map, which doesn't happen too often. Unless you're using Geraldo, then it always happens, but Geraldo does that to every map. Anyways, before round 76, give your top overdrive its own personal alchemist as well. Because this alchemist is getting buffed by Oban, it gains nothing. This alchemist should also be a 320. On round 80, reset your wall of trees. Nothing even went in it. Ever since round 61, nothing has touched the trees. This setup is broken. Anyways, uh, your trees will definitely get affected on round 80. There will definitely be at least a few balloons that go into it, but not nearly enough to pop them. Round 81 also gets destroyed by the setup, which is quite nice. After round 81, you should be able to afford the tack zone on your top overdrive. And 
Once you've done that, get primary training on both of your villages. This will increase the pierce of our attacks and just helps a lot overall. Remove the top and bottom obstacles just so we can get a bit extra visibility range. I don't really know how to say it. Just like a bit extra visibility on the beginnings of certain tracks. It helps. Trust me. And then, before round 84, place a glue gunner right over here on your bottom track and upgrade it to a 013 Moab glue and set it to strong. It should be in the range of your bottom village. If it's not, you've done something horribly wrong and I'm, I'm scared. Anyway, before 85, place a boomerang right over here. Nope, not, not there. Thanks, mouse, for slipping two times in a row. I appreciate it. Anyways, yeah, place the boomerang right over here, kind of like as top right as possible next to your overdrive and embrittlement, and then upgrade it to a 204 MOA press and set it to strong. 024 might be better in this case, but it isn't just because I want to spite Yidus. Anyways, uh, ignore that. Also, when you can afford it, place a Moab glue as top left as possible next to this, like, f hedge flower thingy on the top side, and to upgrade it to a 013 Moab glue set too strong. Same thing as the bottom side. Before round 88, place a second 204 Moab press set to strong right over here. Nope, not, not there. Up here. Just make sure that it's not taking the ALK buff from your overdrive, because if it is, that is really bad and we need our overdrive to be the one taking the ALK buff. And make sure the boomerang set to strong. Very important. Don't actually place this boomerang. I don't end up actually placing this boomerang until a bit later, so yeah, don't don't place it right now. I this is more of just like a test to see if I could fit it there. On round 90, Oban will become one with the mountain, and you should also upgrade your bottom glue gunner to a 024 relentless glue and reset your trees so now they have a much bigger RBE and can actually tank all of the DDTs this run. Oh yeah! We're tanking every single DDT this run with Oban topside. No decamo or D lead needed. It's just Dark Knight and Oban. This definitely won't cause any problems on 95. Trust me. Anyways, for 92, place a Moab Shredder right over here. Just a pretty standard 230 spike factory. This guy helps a little bit with DDTs, and I guess he's kind of nice to have. I don't really know. On 92, I reset my trees, but you could probably wait until 93 to do this. Or just do it on 92. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> the cooldown will get stalled most of the way back, though, just because bottom side does take a long time to clear. For 93, all the DTTs should just get eaten up by Oban's trees. It is kind of scary to look at. I know, uh, trust me, I've done this like so many times, but yeah, you, you should be fine though, if you reset them on 92. For 94, place a third 204 boomerang set to strong. The one that I almost placed earlier, yeah, actually place it this time and then upgrade it to a 204 mode press set to strong. And our bottom side setup is mostly complete. Same with our top side, really, but bottom side is the more complete setup. For 95, you want to place a 030 Cleansing Foam Engineer right over here, in range for discount, but not stealing the ALK buff from anything. 
just a 030 cleansing foam and set it on the track right here. And then upgrade this top guy, finally, to a 230 mob shredder. Or, you know, don't place this alchemist. I almost place it now, but don't don't place it. Do, do not place the alchemist, just get 230 on your mob shredder. I repeat, do not place the alchemist. I realize my stupid mistake. <laughs> just get 230 on the mob shredder. That cleansing foam should decamo the first few camos and make the round not a tiny bit RNG, possibly. Oh yeah, you also want to use brambles because we have nothing to pop the camo purples topside and that is kinda bad. And then once your cleansing foam has decamoed a few of them, just move it off the track so that balloons won't take it but DDTs will be affected by it. Once your wall of trees tanks a few DDTs, reset it, and if you don't mess up anything here, you should just absolutely steamroll 95. And by steamroll, I mean uh, be scared every time a DDT hits your wall of trees that it might pop. Um, but don't, don't, don't worry about that. And then for 96, <laughs> upgrade that top Moab glue to a 024 Luntless glue as well. And now our entire setup is complete, except round 100 defense, which does take up the rest of our money. After the top fortified ZOMG pops on 97, reset your trees so that we can have the cooldown back up completely for 99. That is pretty important, and yeah, we kind of do need that, so just use it after the first fortified ZOMG pops, or the top one pops. 98 gets absolutely steamrolled on the top side and takes a little bit longer on the bottom side, but you should win almost no matter what if everything's on the right targeting and you've placed all the correct towers. Your trees will also tank quite a bit on 98 in most cases, but that's their entire purpose, to tank a lot. So, yeah, don't be scared of that. that that's normal, that's supposed to happen. That's like half the part, that's half the reason the strategy even works. Oban's trees are actually really good. First time I ever said that sentence. But yeah. For 99, reset your trees just because we need them to be able to tank literally everything this round. Literally every single fortified DDT on the top side needs to be tanked because Dark Knight does barely enough damage to them. And then, for round 100, well yeah, bottom side also got a bit sketchy here, but don't worry about that. For round 100, place a 040 first strike sub right over here, and then Give your Moab Shredder on the top side a 301 Alchemist in the discount range. It being in the discount range is very important. And then not not attack shooter, not a bomb shooter, yes actually a bomb shooter, um, a 040 Moab Assassin. The Assassin isn't always needed if you're willing to dark shift, but I just you buy it and use it regardless. Yeah, also move your Dark Knight and use a Moab Assassin and Brambles if you'd like, and then move your Dark Knight back to continue dealing extra damage to the bad. Once you use your Moab Assassin, the bad should be at a low enough HP to where a first strike will completely finish it off. And if you've done everything correctly, you should now have your quad black border with a hero that no one has ever used on this map except maybe like four years ago. Anyways, yeah, I hope this guide helped you out. Have a nice rest of your day. Goodbye.